What is up you guys, welcome. We are Clover Trading and in today's video, we're gonna talk about the biggest mistakes that traders make, just beginning, middle, more experienced traders. Wherever you are in your journey, we all make mistakes, we're all human, and uh, we wanna talk about that. Who's got their biggest mistake they've made? Shorts? You know, as a beginner, I use the wrong risk points. Like, I would pick some level on the stock chart that was just it was not an inflection point. Like this is not something that would unnaturally break through. Like it would just normally go through the uh, the risk point. Mm -hmm. Almost emotionally stopping out once yeah. you're down a certain amount of money. Yeah. Or a lot. I think what I see a lot of beginners do is the risk reward doesn't make sense if they use the right risk level. So they'll use an arbitrary number, maybe the last dip a stock had if they're a long bias trader, just so that way if it does go to where they think it can go, they'll still acquire good risk reward, even when in reality. If they risk all the way down to where they actually the actual stop point is where under that area the thesis is no longer valid then you know the risk war gets thrown off it's almost like a lot of people want to get into the chop zone where it's very hard to read the real levels that are entailed to the stock and instead of actually risking the real levels that you know trade volume at that moment yeah i think that's probably the biggest mistake i make as a more experienced trader right now and i can see myself a week two weeks after the fact is taking multiple trades on the same setup inside of a range where I get so like dialed into needing to nail the setup, whether it be an early entry for a, a breakout trade or something. And I take multiple losses, even when the actual risk level has not been broken. And all of a sudden what one R loss should become, it's like four or five R before the trade even starts to work. And so I'm playing from behind. And even if it does work, I've already given away four or five R just from buying and selling inside of a range. And if it doesn't work, I end up losing even more because once I actually finally do stop out under the actual level, I've already taken so many losses along the way. So to not get into like too specifics with the R's, it's really just about having an edge behind your entry mm -hmm. and really knowing where you want to be involved in the stock, what day, what time, and how does that really fit into the overall pattern and your strategy of having some kind of edge? Well, I've, got, I've always gotten questions of uh, people who ask, you know, what should I risk? Should I risk 2%, 3%? And for me, it's not a percentage, because like you said, in that chop range, you could say you risk 2%, but the range might be 10. Yeah. So you're gonna stop, like, just, like, just like you said, you're gonna stop out four or five times before you even like, the and trade works. Right, mm -hmm. where you should, the best risk should be risking 8%, have a 60, 70% chance that you never even have to stop out and let the trade work, and all of a sudden you made 20, 30, 40% in, in the small caps we trade, and it ends up being a great risk for a trade. I've, I've gotten that all the time. I tell them, you have to risk a price, not a percentage. Exactly, yeah. everything should be based off the chart, and then the money will follow, whether it be what dollar risk you're having, what reward you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. It's all based on the chart first. Yeah. Totally. And I think something that people struggle with is they enter position, right? And if it goes up and they're down, whatever, they're long or short, they'll take profits, right? They'll take profits because they're up on the trade, but you're, you're cutting your winners so short and you're also not like really thinking, you're just thinking about entering. I think this is a good entry level, right? And you enter and it goes in your direction and you take profits and you're taking such a small piece of the move with like Don was saying and everyone else, there's just no risk level or, or profit target in the beginning and rightfully so because you don't know what that risk to reward scale should look like because you haven't seen enough examples yet to know when you should take profits. That's a good point because I think as a beginning trader, I can think of all the times where I maybe sold too early and I just beat myself up like, damn it, why did I sell so early? But it's like looking back now in, in the past, it's like, of course you, like you have, how was I ever going to know if I sold too early or not? You're, the only way you ever will know if you sold too early is because if you sold early before. Like, you know, if you sold too late, you have to literally almost, I mean, we can talk about all the mistakes that are possible, but unfortunately there's a level of learning curve that if you're watching this video, you have to literally experience whether we talk about it or not, because you just have to learn. It, it's the tough, that's what makes trading so difficult because there's a learning curve for everyone, no matter and, how much and, you learn. And, and your learning curve is quite literally experience and yeah. being in the Ocean, trade, being yeah. in, the, in, in, in the muck or whatever it is. One of my favorite quotes from Reminiscence of a Stock Operator is he says, before you can begin to win, you have to learn where you lose, which means you have to lose. And then once you lose a number of times, you realize that's no longer where I want to be. Oh, I win over here and I lose over there. Let's stop doing that and start doing this more. Mm -hmm. And it takes some time and it takes a number of days, years of experience to really find where you lose a number of sample sizes. And I think the biggest mistake that new traders make is you'll hold on to a loser for too long, right? You enter position 
and it starts going against you, but you, you really don't know how far against you it can go. And before you know it, you're blinking, you're down 20%, 30%, 40%, you are down 50% and you're like, holy, like you would have never even made 150% on the trade. <laughs> and here you are down 50%, like the risk to reward makes zero sense. And you're just kind of thinking like, oh, I was gonna wait because I think that I'm right. And it just comes down to a, a scenario where the risk to reward makes zero sense. You have no mm -hmm. level to risk off of, and you're just hoping that it would have gone up or down, whatever, and you would have made money. Yeah, but like furthermore, like think about why were you uncomfortable? Was it because the dollar amount was getting too big? If that's the case, then size down. Was the trade just going against you? I mean, take it off, it's okay. But at the same time, you do need the right risk level and you just have to be stringent with cutting your losses and making sure that your account stays for another day and that you are going to be able to give yourself time to learn how the market works. And I mean, it's cool because we all see different things in the market. So one of my favorite setups is, I've shared it with you, it's like the overnight bounce, right? I love that one. It's incredible and it just works like a charm. Yeah, I think cutting losses is so underrated from the beginning because a lot of people justify not cutting losses in the beginning because you know it's a hundred bucks or it's 200 bucks and it's not life-changing money. But those are the characteristics and traits that are going to be the difference in you blowing up in your five or six when there's a million dollars on the line or five hundred thousand dollars on the line, and where a play, which you know we've all been there, you're risking two k and all of a sudden you're down forty. What what decision are you going to make? Are you going to take it off and move on and live to fight another day? Are you going to fight? Are you going to double down, triple down, continue to average up or down, whatever it is? And if you can learn risk management from day one and learn how to cut your losers at your risk level, it sets you up for so much future success when the money is real. Now there's a caveat to what you just said, and one of the more important things is how do you myriad or marry the two ideas of cutting losses quickly and cutting losses intelligently, right? And there's a time to cut losses, like you need to again pick the right risk levels, and when it breaks your risk levels, that's the time to cut and quickly and intelligently. How do you find the moment where both of those things marry each other, and that is usually the right answer, that is usually the right risk? Yeah, it's just understanding where on the chart, like we talked about earlier, you no longer want to be long or short, whatever thesis you have, like if you wouldn't, in retrospect, would have ever wanted to be long at this point, you need to just learn to just cut it. But it's when that level breaks, it's when to cut it. It's not anticipating, it's not beforehand, it's not being fidgety with what you really want to risk. It's saying, hey, this is the level that if it breaks, it's bad news, whether you're short or long, and if it breaks, you better be quick on that cut button. Not quick because it's going down against you, but quick because it's breaking something very key and significant to most traders. Yeah, when you have that level, because you've mapped it out on the chart, you've analyzed, you have the right risk level, you're sized in appropriately, you're not risking 500 on a $2,000 account or whatever it is, so you're okay taking the loss. Like what you said, marrying it all together, when those things are all right, cutting a loss shouldn't feel emotional. It should just be part of the process because you're going to lose. It should actually be like, thank God, next trade. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's I don't know awesome. what your guys' win percentages are. Mine historically has been around 40% my entire career. Yeah, wow. That means on most of the, <laughs> every trade I go into, I almost expect to lose. So if all those things aren't working in my favor, the statistics aren't going to work out if I continue to let losers go against me. And to transition a little bit from risk into entry and reward, I think that something that's very key for beginners to do is to enter near a support level if they're going long, right? If people want to buy a stock, they might not want to buy it towards a support level because they don't know if it's going to go up. Then it starts going up and then you want to buy. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, right? right? <laughs> you have to enter near the support level so you have a good risk to reward ratio, right? You want to be buying in this support level right here. You don't want to be buying way up here and risking way down here. You want to be buying here and risking right here. Well, it's just the, the theory of like, you know, 90 to 95% of traders lose, right? It's just understanding where they buy. When does the FOMO and the psychological torment hit them and go, oh, I want to be in, I want to be in, but not right now. It looks too dangerous, it looks too dangerous. Oh, now I want to be in, it's breaking high day. That's where you see a lot of people's setups are around those inflection points, like you said, yeah. the volatile moments where you expect stuff or breakup. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of people, the emotional traders are getting involved. And they're getting involved and they know they're not in at a good risk to reward entry. So getting back to what we said in the beginning, they're entering and they're trying to sell right away or they're trying to cut right away. They're trying to scalp in and out and it just doesn't make any sense on a risk to reward standpoint. So at the end of the day, we're all human. We're making mistakes. We're, we're not perfect. That's truthfully the fact of the matter. I mean, I've been trading for seven years. I keep making mistakes. It's going to keep happening, but we come back the next day. We love trading. We just do better. Super well said by my friend Jack here. And if you guys want to hear more, check us out at clovertrading.io. 
We're gonna be producing weekly videos. Make sure you like and subscribe.